قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs. You have fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. وَلَا يَخْشَوْنَا أَحَدًا Don't fear anybody else illa Allah except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is telling us, good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of tests and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. Alhamdulillahi na'maluhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'amalina Ma yahdihillahu falamudhillalahu wa ma yudhlil falahariyalah Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Arasalahu bilhaqi bashira wa nadhira Wa da'iyan ilallahi bi idhnihi wa sirajan munira Amma ba'du faqad kawla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-Quran al-Majid أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والذين ينقضون أهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك أولئك لهم لعنة ولهم سوء الدار صرّك الله العلي العظيم. Begin by saying Alhamdulillah. All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator and our sustainer who has given us life in this world and who has given us this way of life called Islam. A way of life that will bring us success in this world and in the hereafter. There are many, many aspects of this deen that we do not remember, do not recognize and do not follow. And our success lies in fulfilling every aspect of this religion, this way of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us through the noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of those is our relationship with our relatives, our relationship with our kin. And there is a narration about Imam Abu Hanifa, the great Sahaba, Sahabi of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is one of the most prolific narrators of a hadith and once Abu Huraira or the Allah Ta'ala and he sat in a majlis was going to teach and then he said before he started anyone who has broken the ties of relationship of kinship then let him leave a person got up remembering that he had not spoken to his aunt for a very long time, they had had some issue with between themselves. And he went to her and he asked for forgiveness and she inquired as to what made you come? And he related this narration of this statement of Abu Huraira And she asked him to go back to Abu Huraira and ask him, what is it that made him make such a statement when there are so many kinds of sins that we can commit? Yet Sayyidina Abu Huraira made this particular statement. So when he asked him, he said that he remembered Abu Huraira remembered that on a Thursday night, which was the night that this majlis was going on, this session of learning, on a Thursday night that the deeds are taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the deeds of a person who has cut and sever his ties of kinship with his relatives, it is not accepted. And uh, Abu Huraira said that he was afraid that if such a person sat in this majlis, then all of the good deeds of everyone sitting here may be rejected and he did not want that to happen. So he asked whoever was in that position to leave. This is an indication of how serious the Sahaba and how serious Islam looks at cutting off one's kin, one's relations. And we should first of all define who we speak about when we talk about the, the kinship. 
and they are the blood relations that we have with one another. They are our mothers and our fathers, our grandmothers and our grandfathers and going up and going down our children and our grandchildren and going down and on the sides our brothers and our sisters, our uncles, firstly on the paternal side and our aunts and our uncles and aunts on the maternal side and our cousins and our nieces and our nephews, everyone related to them. Of course, our spouses, relatives as well, should be treated in a good manner as well. They do not fall necessarily under this, but they also deserve that good treatment that we will meet out to our own relatives, our own blood relations, as the many ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has indicated. And what is it to be fulfilling that relationship that we are supposed to have with our kin? One of our definition, one of the definitions is politeness, kind treatment, and concern for our relatives. Politeness, kind treatment, and the concern for our relatives, even if they are distantly related. So we start with the closest relations, our parents, our grandparents, our children, our grandchildren. But even if they are distantly related, you know, uh, the, our mothers aren't twice removed and so on. Still, they are our kin, they are our blood, they are our relations. And we show politeness, kindness, kind treatment and concern for them, even if dis distantly related. And this definition says, even if corrupt. Even if corrupt, even if it is that they are our relatives but they do not practice the deen. But we as relatives to them still maintain a relationship with them. Non-Muslim, even if they are non-Muslim or even if they are unappreciative of our moves to maintain relationship with them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us many many ahadith which indicate rewards for maintaining these ties of kinship. For example, in one hadith in Ibn Majah, maintaining good ties with kinship, good manners and being kind to neighbors brings blessings to the house and increases lifespan. In another hadith in Al-Hakim, Ali radiallahu ta'ala answers that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who desires that his life be prolonged and he be grateful uh, and he be granted more provisions and to protect from evil, then let him fear Allah and maintain good ties with his kinship. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Anas radiallahu ta'ala an reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he who desires that he be granted more provisions and his life be prolonged should maintain good ties with his kinship. And in Tirmidhi, maintaining good ties with kinship brings love between relatives and increases wealth and prolongs life. And prolongs life in this hadith means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give more barakah in your life. Not necessarily that he will give more age, more years in your life. But when we keep good relations with our kin, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in our affairs, put barakah in our wealth, put barakah in our lives, put barakah in our health, put barakah in our own immediate family and so on. And the opposite of that, the breaking of kinship, it is a very, very serious affair as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in this verse that I quoted in the very, in the very beginning, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُذُونَ أَهْدَ اللَّهِ Those people who they break the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاقِهِ After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cemented this, has made binding upon us this covenant, وَيَقْتَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهِ بِهِ أَنْ يُوسَلْ And they cut ties with those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded that ties are maintained. In other words, with your kin. You didn't ask to be born in this family. You didn't request that you have this bloodline, but this is how it is. So Allah is saying those people who يَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوسَلَى Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded that you be joined with that family or that person, you cut off that relationship. When you see Duna fell out and you create mischief on the face of the earth, Allah says about these people, Ulaika lahum la'ana. Upon them is the curse. 
Upon them is the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring distress in this world and punishment in the hereafter. Walahum and for them su al adab su an nar su adar sorry and, with, and, and for them will be an evil abode abode an evil place of stay an evil house meaning the fire of Jahannam. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in hadith in Bukhari has said that la yadkhulul jannah qati' he will not enter into paradise the qati' the one who cuts off his ties his relationship with his kin but there is another kind of curse as well so one is the curse of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also when we cut off relationship with our family in this world there is another kind of curse that sometimes you don't realize until it's too late and that is when we become ill because sometimes when we are young and strong and proud and arrogant and independent we can do everything on our own we don't need anybody but a simple thing like a stroke that makes a person paralyzed to the extent that now he cannot even turn his body others have to turn him to clean him up and he has cut his relationship with his family members who is going to come to help him is strangers strangers are going to come sometimes we have to think before we make decisions and say things that will be to our own detriment in the future because these very people our brothers our sisters our cousins our aunts our uncles our nephews that we don't need now we might need them someday and the people who will be there for us then will be these very people for example sometimes a person gets sick with his heart he needs to get surgery who is going to donate the money who is going to help you go to friends many times friends are only there for you when they can benefit from you but when you need them they're not around you need therefore the only ones who stay are the family members poverty sometimes we are well off sometimes you know things are going smoothly and then all of a sudden things take a turn and we become poor we need help where's the help going to come from it's these same kin these same uncles or nephews or even parents or children that we were very callous with and arrogant with and turned away from and felt we could do it on our own and now we need them because of course the charity starts as ho at home and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that the best dinar that a person can give is the dinar that he gives to his family members first of all the immediate family and then the extended family but if it is you do not maintain a relationship with that person imagine for example you have a relative who is well off and you never maintain any relationship with him and then all of a sudden you need that help that financial help perhaps a disaster came a hurricane an earthquake a flood your house was destroyed everything was destroyed by you you have a rich relative how are you going to now approach him how are you now going to go to him are you going to say that oh brother or oh uncle or oh aunt that i need help he will say but for years and years you never came you never visited you never sought my own interest but now that you need something you're coming to help no go to the masjid that's what they will say go to the masjid right and and then we will be the losers so there is a loss as well there is a loss as well when we are when we when we we break our ties of kinship and we feel that we can depend on others we need we will have to depend first of all on our own families our own kin and therefore we should not break our relationship with them we in fact need to maintain a relationship but how does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say we should maintain that relationship that relationship that we maintain with our kin is not just a casual thing especially if there is some bitterness or some difficulty and we say for example we have an aunt she sells eggs i will send my son to buy some eggs and she sells you the eggs and you get back the eggs and you say okay well i have a relationship because we're trading with each other no 
That's not good enough. The real maintainer of the relationship is defined by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a hadith in which he says, Laisal Wasil. He is not the Wasil. The Wasil is the one who maintains the ties of, re of, of relationship. He says, Laisal Wasil Bil Mukafi. That the, 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 the true maintainer of kinship is not the one who me merely reciprocates. That once a year, I give you some Qurbani beef and you give me some Qurbani goat and we have a relationship. That's not really it. The, the real wasil is not the one who just reciprocates and just, you know, once a year or something, we do something like that. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَلَكِنَّ الْوَاسِلَ الَّذِي إِذَا قُتِعَتْ رَحِمُهُ وَصَلَهَا Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the true maintainer is the one who إِذَا قُتِعَتْ رَحِمُهُ When, the, when the, 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 the relation is severed and cut, Wasalaha, then he rejoins and reconciles. The true maintainer is the one who reconciles ties when they are severed. A hadith found in Bukhari. That is the true wasil, the one who makes the attempt to start back the relationship, even if you know it has it has become soured. When it has become soured, not just to maintain it by the giving of gifts and so on. That's fine, alhamdulillah. Sometimes that's the best we can do. But if there is a situation where there needs to be a reconciliation, that is the person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless, the wasil, who does that reconciliation. But sometimes as well, it is difficult, it's not easy to reconcile with people because sometimes people are bitter for their own reasons and they don't want reconciliation. What do we do then? Abu Huraira says that a person came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, I have relatives. I have relatives with whom I try to have close relationship, but they sever the relation. They return my good treatment with bad behavior. They return my good treatment with bad behavior. My kind approach with harsh manner. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if it is as you have said, then you in fact throw hot ashes on their face. It is, if it is as you have said, then in fact, you throw hot ashes upon their faces. So as long as you adhere to this path, Allah will always help you. He will protect you against their mischief. In other words, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, this is something burning upon them. This is hard now upon them because you know what? They know this is the right thing. You know this is the right thing. You are doing the right thing, but they continue to be bitter about it. They don't want to break down pride and arrogance, which we all have, prevents them. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, it's like throwing hot ashes on them. Every time you go and you give salams and you send a gift and they throw the gift in the bin and they don't return the salams and they curse you and you don't give up because they are your relatives. They are your kin. So then it's like throwing hot ashes in their face. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, once you maintain it and you keep on doing what you are supposed to do, Allah will protect you. And whatever evil they're trying to do against you, Allah will prevent that from happening to you. He will protect you from that. So that is the way that we must approach kinship. Never break ties. No matter what was said in the past, forget it. Because these are your family. Forget what has been said. Try to make up. Try to make up and continue the relationship and we install the relationship. But we should ask ourselves as well, what causes this breakup in relationship sometimes? For one, it is ignorance. Many times we don't realize how serious an affair it is to maintain the ties of kinship. We feel that, you know, my brother, my biological brother, he feels he knows everything. I can't deal with him. Leave him alone. Let him live his life. And you don't even check your brother for years and years and years, or your sister for years and years and years. They're going through ups and downs, they're having all kinds of problems. You don't care because he's too arrogant, he feels he knows everything. So our ignorance now prevents us from doing the right thing because if we understood how much of a responsibility it is upon us to maintain these ties and how much we can be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for maintaining these ties, we would put aside the differences and maintain these ties of kinship. And secondly, the next thing is that the life we live, the materialism, we are very busy. 
were very, very busy. And long ago, people would spend the Sunday afternoon going to visit their aunts, going to visit their grandparents. Today, nobody has time. Even on a Sunday, the businesses are open and uh, everything has, you know, there's so much work to do. Everybody is so busy. So the material lives that we live prevents us from fulfilling these duties. Sometimes we even get involved in Islamic efforts. We're doing Islamic efforts. We're in classes, we're learning Quran, and we're learning Hadith and so on. We're coming to classes, we're coming to the masjid and so on. So much so that we don't find time to visit them. We've got to realize that this is also a right that they have upon us. Our relatives, our kith and our kin. And make that time, inshallah. And the third thing that causes this problem is that we are living now, especially the young people, we are living a life of individualism where everything is being tailor-made to suit us. We have the PC, our personal computer, we have our iPhones, we have our you know, individual things that we can deal with. So we don't really deal to any, with anybody else. Everything is between myself and this machine. So you find that some people find it hard to communicate and to talk. So that some people will say, I, I can go and visit my aunt or my uncle or my grand great-grandfather who is old and so on, I'll carry some groceries for him. But what will I say to him then? What will we talk about? Because we don't, we've lost the art of communication. We're losing the art of communication because we only communicate with our fingers now. Text messages and emails and tweets and so on. So we, 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 we are afraid now to go meet our aunts and our uncles and our cousins and our nephews and our grandparents and even our parents and so on because Nobody is talking, nobody is saying anything. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a, you know, the society we're living in, the, the, the mechanization of our society, the, 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 the fact that our society is becoming technologically advanced means that it's also becoming very individualistic and we're losing that art. So we've got to, we've got to turn away from that and ensure that we visit our aunts and our uncles and our kids and our kids and bring back those relationships. And just a reminder about how important this is there's a hadith in Bukhari where the Prophet sallallahu says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ar-Raham, the womb, it is derived from Ar-Rahman which, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of being most merciful. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says فَقَالَ Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said مَنْ وَصَلَكِ وَصَلْتُهُ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَصَلَكِ وَصَلْتُهُ وَمَنْ قَطَعَكِ Kata'atuhu. The Prophet sallallahu says, I will keep good relations. Allah is saying, the Prophet sallallahu is saying, Allah is saying, I will keep good relations with the one who keeps good relations with you. And I will sever the relation with the him, with the one who severs the relation with you. The you, the you here being the womb. The you here being the womb. So Allah is saying to that womb, Allah is saying to those relations, I will keep good relation to that per with that person who keeps good relation with his kin. And I will sever my relation with Allah. Allah says he will sever his relation with those who sever their relation with their kin. So sometimes when we find that we don't have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to look like that man who got up from the majlis and went and looked and found his aunt with whom he had broken his relationship with her and restore that relationship. Sometimes in our lives we need to look back and see with whom we have stopped speaking, with whom we have stopped relating, with whom we have stopped having a relationship, whether they have been unappreciative, whether they have been non-Muslim, whether they have been harsh to us, whether they are distantly related, they are our kith and our kin, we need to continue to make a relationship with them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to call you out. We ask for Allah to give us the blessing of the Muslims from all of them. فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق>